What's the best way to let someone know winter's over? I don't know. Just bring it on them. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of HairTube. I'm here today with Bree. Hey. Um, Bree's uh, going to be our model today and I'm very excited about doing her hair. We're going to have some fun because um, they say blondes have more fun, so we're going to keep her blonde. <laughs> we're going to actually see how blonde we can get her um, and we're actually going to, I'm going to spin around a bit, we're going to actually cut some length off because um, it does have a little bit of damage on the end and what I want to be able to do is um, create fullness. So I think we're going to probably come up to like that lob length. I want to leave it on the collarbones in the front. Um, I think you told me, were you growing out some bangs? Mm, oh, not bangs, but growing like, it out. Yeah, we're yeah. growing out the front a little bit. So I think it's important to mention, even though we are growing it out, you need, do need to cut some shape in there. Otherwise, it's just going to look like it's growing out. So one of the things I say to my clients all the time is, even though your hair, you know, your hair goals are to grow it, maybe a bit longer or grow it out from a shorter style or something similar, I think it's important to make sure they have a shape so it doesn't look like it's growing out. So it just looks like they've had a nice short haircut and then, if you put a good shape in it, it grows out well, and no one's going to know you're growing your hair out because you don't want to go, oh, are you growing your hair? Because it looks like you haven't had a haircut for a few months. So we don't want to do that. Um, today we're going to be using the Light Master with Bonder inside. Uh, it's a new product from Matrix. Uh, make sure we look after the condition of Bree's hair. I'm not sure what I'm going to use on the tone yet. Um, for me, tone is all about making sure we can get it light enough first, um, but obviously we want to match her skin tone and eye colour. Um, Bree also mentioned she wanted to keep it quite sort of casual and worn in. So I think that means we're probably going to stretch a root out and maybe use a technique like backcombing or diffusing. Maybe we can weave in the root so it's not so strong, but um, everywhere else we're going to get as much blonde or as much lightness in as we can. You excited? Yeah, sounds good. How good's Bree's t-shirt? It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's a shameless plug. Um, I'm going to head over to the colour room, uh, get mixed up, and we're going to come back. We're going to start with some foil. See you soon. We're going to start with our Light Master with Bonder inside, and even though they have these scoops, I like to weigh it, don't leave nothing to chance, and it's perfect too, 15 grams, exactly what the scoop says, but even still, I weigh it anyway, and I'm using the Matrix 20 volume. One of the things I like to do is really make sure we take care of our health, so um, while mixing up colour, we use um, these mixers, and uh, we pop that on top. Press the button, and when I come back, it'll be velvety and silky and perfect. You can see, fantastic. Just mixes it up, just the consistency is just so much better. Let's go get started. Chin down for me. Just going to cut this excess excess length off. Um, you know, we're obviously going to cut it up here. So always, uh, if you're going to pre-cut before colouring, make sure you leave yourself plenty of room because um, once this has been um, coloured, shampooed, dried, it'll sit very different. Just chin down, babe. Bree asked me to make sure that this look was soft. So I know we need to put a lot of color in here. You can see that it's pretty much natural, but I'm still going to do weaves, I think. Um, I think that'll be enough color. And I also think it'll go out much nicer. easier and the foils aren't longer but I don't have wide and short ones so as the as we start to go up a little bit and the we get into the width of the head I will break it up into two 
separate side sections, but for now. We're going to use one big section. All right, so we're done, foils are in. Uh, we did pretty much full head of weaves everywhere. Um, so now we're gonna process this, rinse it out, um, bring Brie back in and we'll do um, some color sync and I'll tell you what the formula is. And for those of you who wanna copy it down, I'll always leave it in the comment section. We are back from the basin. And now it's time, you can see, uh, it's raw, we haven't done any toner. It's time to, I'm gonna take the root down a little bit and then I'm gonna take Brie back over to the basin and we will tone the ends. So, time is of the essence when we do these things. Everyone does it different. Some people start in the back, some people start in the front. I start in the front because, well, for me, that's where the people who are having their hair done are gonna see it first. So, I wanna make sure that it's even and neat through the front and then the back. If it's a little bit um, uh, slow to come up, I can always reapply it. I decided to go quite dark on the route today. Here's color sync. We're going for a five level that hopefully has a little bit of violet. Is it gonna be bright violet? No, as I can hear Brie gasp. <gasps> What? Violet. I think sometimes when we're toning hair, people just go safe. Like, let's have some, have some fun. It's, um, again, semi-permanent colour. It's going to fade. And rather than just do something natural and boring, I thought I'd brighten it up a little bit, make it look a bit different. We are back from the basin. Um, what I'm gonna do is quickly dry off Bree's hair. Um, I'm gonna cut her hair dry today. Um, so I'm gonna dry it off and when you come back, you'll be able to see the color and then we'll start the haircut. Bree is back. You can see that we've now done our foils. We've toned, I've smoothed the hair because I'm doing a dry haircut today. And um, I'm really loving the color. I think it's, um, it's very nice, it's fresh. I think we've um, met our brief of what that was. You know, we wanted something that was, was brighter, was lighter, but also at the same time natural. I think we've done that. Okay, so scissor in, comb on the top. Get Brie to make sure she's nice and still. difference with this haircut on the ends is I'm going to cut my foundation shape first then I'm going to actually chip into the ends just to give it a bit of texture and I'm doing it in one section because I actually want it to be choppy on purpose I want to actually have sort of ripped torn texture for this particular haircut and I find that just that little imperfection that you get when you try and cut one big large section all at once it actually gives me exactly the amount of 
picture on me. guys don't often see me point cut but I do do it and this is an example of it you can see that obviously Bree's not going to walk around the world with a head like that but when it's like this I just want to get that sort of choppiness on there which is kind of cool so it makes it edgy So the front um, is going to be cut into the back of the haircut today. Um, we're over directing it to retain the length in the front because I'm really happy with that front length, but I wanted to have a little bit more of a point of difference and not just look like a, you know, every other lob that's sort of running around. And I'm also going to do a tiny little bit of shaping in the interior just to, again, make this look a little more relevant and modern. We left all the length there. Now I can just get you to look down to the back of the salon for me. Perfect. I do this always just so we can make sure that we don't have to worry about the shoulder here. Um, if I'm doing here, obviously you've got to worry about the shoulder. And when you ask your client to turn their head to the side, it makes it super easy just to get in there and we can just wipe those little pieces off. And then again, we want to add our little choppy texture. Just make it more fun and playful. But one of the things I do do, and uh, you saw me when I was working the baseline, is make sure that I do a strong solid line first and then I texturize it after. Just look down here for me, perfect. Just going to introduce a little shape around the front we don't want to do too much we want to keep this and we want to keep that long as we said we want to leave these so we're just going to do some bangs you guys will hear me bang on pardon the pun about triangles all the time and you can see they're just head down for me gorgeous there's another triangle and head up spin to the side we're going to project that make sure the back is shorter than the front so when you let it go you can see the short hairs here that'll push the hair out We'll take it back up and just give it a bit more texture. I'm just going deeper, not wider. So I want to have a little bit more hair from the back in there, so it's got a bit more fullness. And then before we drop it this time, just going to add some texture. Make sure that, unlike what we did on the ends when we went like this choppy, you literally just want to go in and remove the weight. It just creates separation so that the hair's got um, space to fall in like, like this rather than chopping it and then making your um, your sort of design line, your cutting line have um, like sort of chunks out of it. It's not, not nice. So that should just give us just a little bit of shape. See on the side there? Just a little bit of shape for her face. And then we leave all the length here in the front. Again, we're going to go narrow to wide, which is a triangle, narrow to wide. You can see that, narrow to wide. And we're going to project it. So just grab the bangs from the front. There it is there. That's how we got our guideline. I find that what that does is by using that as a guide into the back, when we push the hair to the back, we get flow. So this will actually flow into the back rather than having it like disconnected. 
it all connects and has synergy. It's really, really quite nice when you do it like that. It simplifies everything too. Um, makes it easy for us to follow because we're setting markers. So we use the marker that we created in the front when we created the shape around the front and those bangs to be able to um, find the right length to get that synergy for the back. It's just all about making sure that we have good flow, it grows out, it's wash and wear, and when the hair's always got somewhere to go, it's not sitting on top or it's not being pushed from underneath. We don't have to um, worry about excessive styling and our, our clients will like it because it means it's true wash and wear. True wash and wear is not um, get out of the shower, towel dry it and spend 20 minutes blow drying it. That's not wash and wear. Wash and wear is literally um, means that I can let this dry naturally completely or I can just blast it off or I can style it, but it's not a prerequisite. It means that I can do very, very little and make sure that it looks great. Again, you know, modern women are very busy. They're at work, they've got kids. If they're single, they've got a social life. If they've got a boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, the time is not something we have in abundance these days. So um, I know there is that client that um, is happy to spend time styling the hair or that even come into the salon and have their hair blow dried regularly or styled. But the majority of my clients are actually all wash and wear clients. So um, that's why I use these techniques because I found with my experience dealing with them, that's actually helped them achieve what they're looking for. Lucky last chin down for me, gorgeous. Just gonna take horizontal sections underneath. So you can see I'm raking it from behind the ear, underneath, horizontal texturizing, making sure we project it at 90 degrees or above for the same reasons as when we layer hair, because when we texturize it above 90 degrees, it falls soft. When we texturize it 90, uh, below 90 degrees, it gets harder. And then obviously when we texturize it natural fall, it's actually gonna be chunky, just like I did the baseline. But when we're doing this to create, again, room for the hair to move, we wanna make sure that we're not actually going to leave marks everywhere. It's all about having that seamless worn look and having the effect of it being really, really heavily laid, which is volume, movement and um, less weight in the hair, but not actually being able to visibly see layers. It's the most requested thing that I get asked all the time. It's like, I want layers, oh, sorry, I want volume, I want movement, and I want um, to be able to see like separation in the hair, like be able to see the color from underneath, but I don't want to see any layers. So it's like, hang on a minute, how do you do that? Um, so it took a lot of uh, thinking, but um, this is how I do it. So it's a combination of texturizing horizontal at 90 degrees and above like I am now, and also that layering that I just did then, which is not like uh, reinventing the wheel. I mean, it's been around for a long time. It's just, I think it's the way I combine it. It's a combination of using those two techniques together, which make it a little bit different. Okay. Just one more here on the side. And then it's time to do some styling and reveal the new brie. I'm really happy with the, um, the way the colors turned out. So again, I will put the formula for the toner at the bottom in the description, but for those of you who um, are listening and want to write it down now, here's your chance. So I used the Matrix Light Master with Bonder inside to lighten the natural hair and I obviously did weaves you guys if you look back on the video you'll see that I did weaves um, I did them a little bit heavier in the top because I didn't want the color to get lost and then for the rest I again I, I just try and do them random because we wanted to we wanted to look a little bit when I say random I mean it's it's not like I wasn't thinking about it but I I don't want to make every weave perfect I wanted to have it like different textures in there so um, well even if I tried to do every one the same probably wouldn't be possible but I guess you understand what I'm trying to say. I wanted to have a little bit of variation. Then once we lightened it all, um, I used some Matrix Color Sync as a toner. So I used on the root, I used, um, I started with uh, 5N. So I used 25 grams of 5N, 25 grams of 5VV, uh, five grams of 6M and five grams of 8P. Um, and then I used 10 vol. I processed that on the roots. You saw me apply that, processed it on the roots. Then I estimated that I, and the reason why I didn't actually estimate, the reason why I know I only used about 38 
so grams of colour because I got an empty bowl, put it on the scale, paired it, took it off and put my um, bowl back on there. And then I diluted that mix 50% with clear in colour sink. And then I um, topped it up with Tenvol. And that's what I used to process the ends at the basin. So when I took Brio to the basin, I rinsed it off the roots. I didn't shampoo it. I applied the rest of the mix after mixing clear with it onto the scalp left it for about 60 seconds, then took it through to the ends and I just visually toned it. Um, so with toners for me, if you want longevity in your toner, you should choose one that you can actually comfortably know you can leave it for the entire processing time, which for color sync, I believe is 20 minutes. Um, but if you're gonna do visual toner, then you need to stand there and watch it. But um, the thing that I have found with visual toners is sometimes they can be, um, have a they can have a little less longevity. So that's why I would recommend for um, breeder take home the uh, brass off shampoo and um, treatment, mask treatment. That way we're gonna make sure that if it starts to go a little bit brassy over the next four to six weeks before she comes back to the salon, um, we're gonna maintain the color between salon visits because we want it to look um, perfect for the entire time. Something that I think hairdressers feel, I don't know if it's scared if it's the right word, but um, you know, those of you who are clients out there, feel free to comment if you wish your hairdresser would spend more time talking to you about retail and recommending you um, the proper home hair care. So you don't have to go to a, a retailer and sort of fend for yourself and try and find the things that you think you need and then have someone who's just uh, in retail with minimal training recommending you something when your hairdresser probably should be doing it. You know, th this is not about selling your clients products and trying to make a little bit extra money. Although I know that some some um, salons, the way they structure their salaries, um, you do get incentives for selling retail, which is a great incentive. However, you're actually solving someone's problems because if you don't recommend um, your um, client, um, say if it's just a haircut, a styling product, if it's a cut and color, a treatment to look after the hair if you've lightened it, or a color shampoo to maintain the color between salon visits, you've created them a problem. So you're not solving the problem, you're actually creating them a problem. If they're going to get anxiety, they're going to go to a retailer, they're going to have a retail worker, respectfully, who hasn't had the training we've had, recommended them some retail. And that's a scary thing because it's like, this person didn't do my colour or my haircut and they're trying to tell me what I should be styling or, or maintaining my hair with. So um, if you're a client out there and you've had that experience, write a comment section because I think if it's, uh, if it's actually the case, it'd be actually refreshing for hairdressers to know that so that they don't feel like they're just trying to sell your products all the time. And you're done? Look great. Yeah. What do you think, guys? <laughs> Pretty looks amazing. Thanks, Adam. You're very welcome. Thanks for trusting me. Um, I think, um, go back to the beginning of this video, I think it's, uh, it's quite a, it's quite a, how would you say, not dramatic, but I think it's a notable, noticeable uh, change, a bit of a transformation. So I think you look better. So just to recap on what we did, um, obviously you can see at the beginning of the video, we had a big regrowth, so I've, I've done that. I've uh, got rid of that, we've lightened the hair using weaves. Um, we've gone back through later on and we've done a toner. Again, that's in the description. Um, so it was a, you know, three hours of fun, but I think it was worth it. You look great. Thanks for hanging out with me today. How good does she look in that t-shirt? <laughs> if you guys um, would like to support my channel, um, you can get over to um, my Facebook page or Instagram and you can grab yourself um, one of these t-shirts. You can actually buy them on my YouTube channel as well. Um, but I'd prefer you to buy it from um, my Instagram page because I think the quality is a little bit better. So if you want to grab a hair chew t-shirt like this or a cutter t-shirt, um, it'd be great for you to do that because you're supporting my channel. And um, they look cool too. You can look hot like Brie. Thanks. Um, thanks for coming in today. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Um, if you guys think you might know someone who may benefit from this video, please share. If you don't already subscribe, uh, make sure you do and click the bell so when we upload a new video, um, you'll get notification and if you don't already please go and follow me on Instagram because I have different content on there and you might like that too Until next time. It's uh, bye from us in Canberra